Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ian, digital marketing consultant and agency owner. And in this video, I wanna talk about the two most popular analytics platforms on the web, Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics. In this video, we're gonna talk about which platform is best for you and your business and what are the differences between both of these platforms. If you stick around till the end of the video, I'm gonna get into the one free platform that can provide even better data than either Facebook or Google Analytics. So if you guys are ready to learn about these two platforms, Let's get into this. All right, so we're gonna get into these two separate analytics platforms, but first I wanna talk about them a little bit. So if you guys don't know, Google Analytics was originally a separate company called Urchin Tracking that Google purchased in 2005. Because of this, the types of technologies that Google Analytics uses for web tracking are very different from the types of technologies that Facebook is using. Facebook Analytics was built by Facebook and was released in 2017. So you can see there's a 12 year gap there where the technologies used on the web uh, became very different. The most important thing to understand about Google Analytics is Google Analytics uses what's called user sessions, which it tracks with cookies. This was a, you know, the most popular web technology and way to track users online back uh, prior to 2005 when Urchin Tracking was building this system. The system that Facebook uses has to do with sign-ins or user sessions on their platform. User sessions on their platform can be tracked across devices. You can think of how someone can be using Facebook's platform on a tablet, a smartphone, uh, on a PC. Regardless of what they're on, their user session when they log into Facebook is the same across platforms. Because of this, users can be tracked more seamlessly across all these different devices on the Facebook platform, but uh, Facebook's platform is you know, not yet on all devices, meaning, or on all websites, meaning not all websites have the Facebook pixel, you know, an increasing number of websites, a larger percentage of the sites online do have the Facebook pixel. So every year this tracking system is becoming more valuable. But for right now, most people are still gonna wanna use the uh, cookie based web analytics platform that Google Analytics has for the majority of their you know, basic uh, web analytics. But that being said, we're gonna get into both of the platforms here. So I'm just gonna pull them up on my uh, Chrome browser. So first off is Google Analytics. Now when you come into Google Analytics, the one thing you'll notice is that there are just a ton of different options for customization. You can see here you have options to set up different types of reports and dashboards, and then there's a number of different ways to look at the stats on your website. Some of the most valuable tabs that I'm using uh, often you know, as a uh, running paid traffic for clients is I'm usually gonna be in the uh, acquisition tab or the uh, conversion tab looking at e-commerce data. So you know, all these tabs have a ton of great data, but just to get into a couple of my favorite, you can see here when we go in the acquisition tab, right off the bat, there are a ton of different views and each one of these views has its own you know, sub subset of options for for different views. So I'm just gonna go into one of the ones I'm, I'm in pretty often, which is campaigns, uh, all campaigns. So you can see here an example of what an all campaigns tab would look like. Uh, we may have, okay, so we don't have any UTM campaigns, but basically what this would do is for your, if you're familiar with UTMs, it's uh, the shorthand name for what used to be urchin tracking's urchin tracking module, which is the long you know string of characters that's appended to URLs to allow Google Analytics or whatever platform you're using to track what your different campaigns are doing. So in this case, I don't have any uh, UTMs on this account, but this would come up here uh, with the name of your campaign. For most people, if you're running paid traffic like Facebook or Google ads, you're gonna have the, you know, the medium, the source, and then also the name of the campaign and potentially even the ad set or the ad creative uh, appended to the URL that you're using so that you can see all your campaigns and you can attribute a certain amount of revenue to those campaigns. So when you come in here, uh, this is an easy way that it, it displays and you know this is gonna be something you're not gonna be able to use with Facebook Analytics because Facebook Analytics does not work off the same uh, tracking technology, it does not use UTM. So it's gonna be a little more difficult in Facebook uh, for it to register all your different uh, campaign behavior. Uh, another nice one is you come down here into conversion and uh, you know e-commerce conversions is a huge one. Uh, again, I don't have campaigns running in this account, so we're gonna skip that, but e-commerce allows you to see if you have e-commerce tracking enabled and the correct scripts on your page, it allows you to see all the purchases that are taking place on the site, which is another really nice feature you won't have in Facebook unless you have some sort of uh, you know conversion events installed on the page. So in some cases, uh, for e-commerce stores, it's gonna be easier to get your e-commerce data into Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics. But moving on, another part of Google Analytics uh, that's really useful is the conversion paths. So you can go into Google Analytics and uh, you know see your top paths to conversion. I'm gonna go into another account here real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about uh, simply because uh, 
we, we don't have campaigns set up in this account. Wrong, wrong account pulled up for an example. So let me pull up another one real quick. So if I'm in this other account, which has a ton of conversion data and we go into multi-channel paths, you can see your top conversion paths. And what this is gonna show you is the different you know, sources and mediums people are using to get to your site and actually make a purchase. So right here, we can see one of our top paths is direct. So somebody will have gone directly to the site twice prior to purchasing. Now, if you're really into web analytics, you know that if you're seeing a lot of direct paths, this generally means that you don't have, uh, you have campaigns that are not being tagged into Google Analytics, but we're gonna ignore that for now and uh, just use this as an example of some of the data that's, that's great to pull out of Google Analytics. So another example you can see here, someone's coming off a social network, then going directly to the site and then purchasing. Another example of a conversion path is someone is you know, being linked to the site through an organic search and then they're coming back to the site with a, you know, a direct, uh, direct path to the site, meaning they're probably typing in the URL. So this is a nice feature of Google Analytics that it easily starts displaying some of your conversion paths. Of course, you're gonna have to modify this data uh, you know, with your own campaign data. You're gonna make sure you're UTMing your campaigns so that this is a little bit more accurate. And one other thing, is again, if you're showing a lot of direct paths uh, like this one showing right now, it probably means that you have to uh, add some referral exclusions, which I, you know, I explain in some of my other videos, but basically it means that at some point the user sessions online are breaking. So this could be something like someone's browsing on the site and then they leave and switch devices and it doesn't register as the same path. And basically what happens in Google Analytics is a lot of the time, if it has traffic that it can't identify, meaning the user session online was broken prior to them coming back and purchasing something, it will bucket that traffic into direct traffic. So if you're just a little caveat, if you're seeing a lot of direct traffic, it probably means you need to work on your cross domain tracking or a lot of people are coming in on different devices. So anyway, that's another nice view. And then of course, uh, some of the views that people use uh, often if they're not familiar with the rest of the Google Analytics platform is you know your real-time overview, which shows what people are doing right now on your site, and then your audience, which is really great for uh, some of your demographic data. You can get stuff about you know your age, gender, uh, and then you can go down into interests, geographical locations, behavior, uh, devices. So there's there's tons of different options for how you want to view your data on Google Analytics. So it's a great all around web tracking platform. You know, making sure that your data is accurate is paramount with Google because there are some are some things you're going to have to set up that aren't going to be perfect out of the box. So you just have to make sure you know how to set up data, and Google Analytics will probably be your best bet for a web tracking platform. Moving on to Google Anal or Facebook Analytics, you're gonna see here that the setup is quite a bit different. There's all these different metrics right off the bat, uh, just blasting you in the face. And basically the important thing to understand about Facebook Analytics is that it's gonna have great reporting out of the box. It's gonna be really easy to set up. You're not gonna have to modify the data, but the downside is that you're not gonna have as much customization and you're not really gonna be mo able to modify the way the data is being uh, displayed in the platform. In Google Analytics, you have what's called views, which allows you to basically work on how your data is displayed in the platform, meaning you can modify the way that Google is reporting based on certain things you want to see or don't want to see in the analytics platform. In Facebook, they're not giving you any of those options. Basically, Facebook is assuming they know all the metrics you want to see and they're serving it up to you on a platter. You can see here that we have a lot of really great uh, growth numbers. You can go in here and look at cohort data. You can look at retention data. Uh, you can look at all these great breakdowns for how you want the data displayed. Here you can see different, different cohorts of people coming in and how they're retaining over time. So there's a lot of awesome options right up front for how the data is displayed. And then their dashboard feature as well is uh, super easy to set up as it allows you to go down uh, this list on the side here and basically pick out what you want to see and create your own version of what they have here on the overview, which is a custom dashboard. So Facebook's going to be really great for advertisers who are using Facebook ads and then people that want to you know, do some business reporting. Maybe you have clients and you want to give them reports without uh, you know, having to have them go through and, and build any of the data or metrics they wanna see. So one nice thing that I'll use Google or Facebook Analytics for, excuse me, is to I'll set up a custom dashboard for some of the companies I'm working with and I'll uh, you know, have, uh, give access to the ads account to the clients that I'm working with and tell them how to get to the dashboard. And then you know, Facebook Analytics makes it really easy to have a simplified dashboard with a few important numbers uh, you know, for user growth over time and changes in revenue revenue and changes in the average revenue per user and some of these metrics that your clients are really going to care about, but they might not want to go and find themselves in a more complicated platform like Google Analytics. So the other thing you need to understand about Facebook Analytics is again, the way it's tracking users is going to be different. Instead of using uh, user IDs that are tracked in cookies 
for each session as someone's browsing through different web pages. Facebook's going to use user logins on their platform and uh, its ability to track those users across the web, regardless of the device they're on. So in this case, uh, Facebook Analytics is often going to avoid some of the problems you'll have with Google Analytics, things like broken user sessions or you know a large amount of traffic being attributed to direct traffic because of those broken user sessions online. You're not going to run into problems like that. So overall, Facebook's a much easier platform to start using. It's going to be great for basic business reporting or sending reports to clients easy way to build dashboards. And if clients are getting in there and looking at their analytics, it's going to be much easier for them to understand what's going on in Facebook analytics than it will be in Google analytics. So great for client reporting. Uh, overall, it's not going to be as useful for an out of the box uh, web analytics solution right now, just because of the amount of time Google has put into their platform and building the customizations that people want to see. So in time, this may become an extremely viable platform as a standalone web analytics product. But right now, uh, it still leaves a little bit to be desired as a you know, the sole source of data as a standalone web analytics platform. Okay, that being said, we are now at the end of the discussion of these two platforms and their you know relative merits. So I want to get into the one other platform that's free that's potentially better than either of these platforms, and that's Facebook's attribution product. So Facebook attributions, uh, Facebook's attribution product is really interesting because it does a couple of things that neither of the platforms, Facebook or uh, Google Analytics, do extremely well, and that is tracking user paths and uh, attribution across the web. So if you guys notice at the start of this video, I was showing common user paths through my Google Analytics for uh, one of the sites that I have uh, an account with. And one of the things you probably noticed is that direct traffic was being shown in a number of spots, uh, you know, two, three, four, five times customers returning five times through direct traffic, which means entering the URL was uh, were some of the top conversion paths for a site. This is not likely correct. What's most likely happening is users that are on uh, on our site at some point are leaving the site and coming back and their user session is breaking, meaning Google Analytics is not uh, able to identify that this person had already been on the site and as part of the same session, they were coming back to that site. You know, they might've purchased something uh, left to go to a payment processor's page, like go to a common one is they'll go to PayPal and then come back. And for one reason or another, that user session is broken. Now that it could be that uh, we don't have the correct referral exclusions in place, which again, I'll get to in another video. But oftentimes with Google Analytics, this could be just that the person is switching a device. You know, so they'll come to the site, uh, they'll leave the site for a sec, they'll switch devices, they'll come back you know, via direct uh, entrance of the URL on that new device. And instead of registering as the same user session, it's going to break the session and Google Analytics is going to assume that the person just came back out of the blue. So that's why you're seeing that direct, uh, most likely seeing those direct conversion paths. What's nice about Facebook's session up for their tracking is that they don't use user sessions online that are tracked via cookies. And what this means is that you won't get as many broken user sessions. So Facebook's report on the conversion paths is going to be really useful because you're not going to see as many of those broken down user paths. And right here, you can see right off the bat, uh, you know, I know for this account, we're using a lot of advertising. So this makes a lot more sense to me that we're getting a lot of people coming through on Instagram, most likely via our paid ads rather than direct traffic. It's highly unlikely the direct traffic accounts for our most popular conversion paths. This to me makes much more sense because you're seeing direct or no refer here uh, down at the third, uh, third most popular conversion path rather than, uh, you know, in the Google Analytics report, there were obviously some issues because we were seeing direct traffic, you know, in three or four of the top five spots, which is not likely accurate here, uh, given the amount of paid traffic we're using, seeing Instagram at the top two spots, and then seeing Instagram again down here uh, is much more likely given the amount of, I know this site is based on a, uh, you know, influencer that has a ton of uh, Instagram followers. And we're also running on top of that, we're running, you know, paid advertising on Facebook and Instagram. So these conversion paths make a lot more sense right out of the box. Uh, this is Facebook's attribution tool. Don't get it confused with Facebook analytics. This is Facebook's attribution tool. And right out of the box, it has some of the best data on conversion paths that you can get. The setup is very minimal. Uh, there's not a lot of things you don't need a developer to set this up for you. It's easy to integrate with some of the popular ad platforms like of course, Facebook's ads, Google uh, Google ads as well, as, as well as many of the other ad platforms. Really simple to integrate. Uh, it's great that they make it you know easy to use with Google's platform, which you can't, can't always say for Google. Uh, and then finally, one of the really nice things that I'm going to leave you with here is is the attribution. So attribution is how a platform is determining if a conversion came from an ad or a certain campaign or a different source. Attribution is the way that sales are attributed to all these different sources. And the problem with many of these free platforms is they give you no customization options for the attribution model you're using. Meaning common attribution model that we'll use as an example is first click versus last click. First click attribution means that the first ad that someone clicked through on is going to get 
uh, it's going to count that as being the source that a sale came from, regardless if someone clicks through on another ad or does other things on the site. First click attribution is going to give that sale to the first ad someone clicked through on. In contrast, last click attribution is a different model, which is, you know, as the name suggests, it's going to give credit for the sale to the last ad someone clicked on. So you can see how the way that sales are going to be reported is very different between first click and last click attribution. Those are just two examples. There's tons of different attribution models, but the important thing here is that you actually can come up and switch the attribution model, meaning you can switch the conversion window, how long it's counting conversions, and then the actual uh, type of attribution model you're using. And you can see how reporting is different for each of those attribution models. The best thing about this is that Facebook actually allows you to use their data-driven attribution model, which combines all these different types of attribution and over time learns how your customers are converting to give you more accurate data on which channel actually caused the conversion versus just essentially guessing using you know first click or last click or some of the other attribution models like time decay so there aren't many free platforms that allow you to use a truly data-driven attribution model Facebook attribution is one of the only ones so two things it's really gonna stand out for are accurate conversion paths and accurate uh, attribution models uh, so if you're trying to create a close to accurate attribution model, I highly suggest you install Facebook's attribution. It's a free tool out of the box. It provides great reporting and it's gonna be your best bet to getting a close to accurate attribution model, especially if you're not gonna pay for you know extremely expensive paid tools that have very high monthly costs. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Hopefully you can use Facebook's attribution in your business. It's an awesome product and I highly suggest it. Finally, if you guys are interested in seeing more videos about data-driven marketing, paid acquisition, make sure to like and subscribe so you get notified anytime that we come out with new content. All right, thanks for watching.